question for you, Clint, is when did you found the Citizens Campaign Against Big Lick Avenue Cruelty? Well, I guess the answer to that is in February of 2015. It was a situation where in 2014, the PAST Act, unfortunately, didn't make it. And there were legislative roadblocks, and then there were some other situations where people got compromised, and the Big Lick had filed a lawsuit against the USDA in Texas against the mandatory minimum penalties, and that uh, was tried. It was heard in September of 2014 in New Orleans, and then the court ruled in February, February 19th of 2015, and it threw out the mandatory rules. The rules were to make sure that if you sort a horse, you got punished. Something actually happened to you. Okay, so it was at a low point, and I was tired of fooling with the legislative process. I uh, saw that they had the politicians bought, so I said, we're just going to do this the old-fashioned American way. We're going to the people. We're going to take it to the streets. We're going to go where these courses are, horse shows are, where the animal cruelty is being perpetrated, and we're going to bring it to the attention of the public. And I started a change.org petition in Mississippi. I asked the University of Mississippi and the Medical Center to disassociate itself from a big lick horse show that had been going on for decades called the Mississippi Charity Horse Show in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, the response was overwhelming. Uh, the university, I um, graduated twice at the University of Mississippi, and I liaisoned with them and let them know we were not trying to hurt the university, but that we would appreciate them giving consideration. In seven days, they publicly disassociated the university medical school center from the Big Lick Animal Cruelty Horse Show, and not only that, they refused in the future to accept any charitable donations and. One was a $50,000 annual charitable donation. Since that time, we went and started protesting. We protested in Nashville, Tennessee in April, and we went to Columbia twice. Uh, we went from there on to the celebration. Uh, a horse, and you see these stacked shoes in front of me, came into the picture, Jen's Ice Glimmer, July of 2015. Uh, again, we petitioned, it was February, uh, then Columbia was in May and June, and then in July, Tawny Preissner, Horse Plus Humane Society, called me one day and said she was at an auction sale in Cookville and there was this horse and what to do. And I looked at the pictures and I said, we've got to buy this horse. And so she bought him and we brought him back and the USDA looked at him and they started an investigation. He's got horribly scarred feet. They're on our banner that we take everywhere we go. The banner last night precipitated a violent incident, another one, where uh, somebody going to the horse show, we don't know yet who he is, but we'll find out, drove a truck at uh, the three ladies and a gentleman from Memphis, and I was shooting a video. And it's been reported to the sheriff of Tunica County, and uh, prosecution is going forward in the matter. And we expect to have more information on that at the first of the week. Uh, we, after Glimmer came on the scene, we connected with Channel 4 in Nashville, which provided and covered his story, and then we went to the celebration. And we were well received and extraordinarily protected by the uh, police in Shelbyville, and uh, that's to their credit. Uh, can't say enough nice things about them. Shelbyville gets a bad name in a lot of ways, but they should not get a bad name where that's concerned. And I'll tell you something else about Shelbyville. That community is not supporting the celebration. They've walked away from it. They don't attend. They, uh, it's, a, it's just not what it ever started out to be, and it's got an unmarketable product. That's where we are at this point in time. We had, Cablock had the protest up in Asheville, North Carolina, 1st of October, about a month ago. One advocate went in, got a video. It's gonna be seen a million times before it's over. It's about 875,000 times now. It shows that the World Grand Champion Tennessee Walking Horse Honors, they used to call him the Savior Horse, couldn't even can him. He's struggling in the most painful way imagined. Every equestrian around the world has seen that video and is shocked and appalled. The canter is a simple gait. It's sort of a lope. It's a modified gallop, slow, easy horses. Naturally, they do it from the time they were born. They do it beside their mother. This horse was struggling. He couldn't control his feet. He had to stop. The trainer was jerking in his mouth. It was horrific to look at. But that's gonna make the difference. We go on these horse shows, the advocates 
We get pictures, we show the world what it's like. And they see it and they say no. And they actually say, well, why is it this been abolished? Why is it this over? Why is it still going on? So last, in 2015, I'm jumping around, but we did the celebration. Then we went to MTSU. And Glimmer was sorted at MTSU by a judge of the celebration uh, on a college campus. It has the largest enrollment in the state of Tennessee. Not only that, we've come to find out that people in the administration were involved with the horse show. And then the administration was not, was not truthful insofar as they did not disclose that the MTSU Pre-Vet Society is the one that sponsored the horse show. So it's just peeling the layers of the onion back. And we're down now to just a hardcore of big lick advocates that are having this horse shows. It's like people in the prison running their own asylum. Okay, they're doing it for themselves. The public has walked away from it. The public is never coming back. You can take these shoes and you could modify them by half and you can take those chains off. It's still not gonna work. It's indelibly imprinted on the mind that this is animal cruelty. And the people, we've done 27, 28 public peaceful protests. We've had one criminal conviction take place when a horse trainer drove a truck at a lady who was president of a national organization who's testified before Congress on this issue. And uh, it's just shocking. But the world is educated more now, and we will continue this until it's over with. Fortunately, the Secretary of Agriculture stepped up in 2016, and he brought about a sweeping regulation to uh, end the 46-year reign of terror, in which uh, the pads and chains were removed from the Tennessee walking horses. There's been a lot of discussion about what breed it affects, what breed it doesn't affect. That all needs to be cleaned up. The secretary needs to get it right. It's not complicated. This federal, this rule needs to be published in the federal register uh, no later than the 15th day of December. And that's what we, the people, are expecting. That's what we ask. That's what we demand. We're not going to put up with this anymore. It's just clear as day. Now, I've jumped around and I hope I've touched on some questions, areas, but what else do you, what else would you like to ask? I think we've had over, well, I know, we've had over 200,000 people sign change.org petitions. This is a national and international movement. It's not going to be denied. It's not going away. And we're there. And I'm proud to say Comblock is going to the Equus Film Festival in New York in three weeks, and I will proudly represent all the people that have supported what we stand for, and we speak for the horses that cannot speak for themselves. You asked, or you told me a while back that one of the shows that you protested, the show is finished forever. What, uh, where was that? That's a great question. Jackson, Mississippi has historically had a horse show going back to the 1930s. It was a sound show. It truly really tells this whole story of the Tennessee walking horse breed and how it got co-opted with Sore. But anyway, it went sore back in the late 50s, early 60s. There was a man from Jackson, a, a good man. He bought a walking horse that was the world grand champion named Go Boy Shadow. Okay, Shadow actually was in Jackson for a while. But the horse show, unfortunately, was founded by the leading citizens of the city. But then, as things moved along, it got to where, in the most recent, last five to 10 years, it just really got bad. Consequently, uh, once we brought it to the public attention, once the University of Mississippi walked away from it, uh, it's, it's over. They'll never have another big lit Tennessee walking horse show on the state fairgrounds in Mississippi, and the cab block has accomplished that, absolutely, with the support of people all over the world. Uh, and, the, and the University of Mississippi can't be applauded enough, along with the University of Tennessee. This Saturday, my plans are to go to Neyland Stadium, University of Tennessee. This will be the fourth year I've covered the sound flash shot Tennessee walking horse. And historically, it was tradition for decades that would invite the Big League World Grand Champion. This is where honors would normally be uh, if things were the way they used to be. But now honors, unfortunately, and he's a wonderful animal, but he's been, there's a record of how he's been treated and that cantering, attempting to canter at Asheville, I think pretty much is a signature video and it will conclude any uh, illusions as to what the big league really is or why it should end. A lot of us have been making comments on the USDA APHIS website. People from all over the world have been making comments. 
Can you give us a little idea of uh, how the percentage has worked out? Well, for a long time it started out like it was 85 or 90 percent. The Big Lick, there's about five, five to six hundred people they have, maybe seven hundred. Uh, the saddlebred people and some of the other breeds got involved because USDA did not clearly state the rule. The rule, instead of mirroring the past act, got off into areas talking about related breeds and then there was a clarification that was also confusing about a cake shoe and 16 ounces and none of that should have ever been that way. This is not complicated, but to his credit, Representative Ted Yoho, Tea Party Republican from Florida, large animal veterinarian, a real good friend of Coblock. Uh, he's been encouraging, he's been a gentleman to me personally. He cleared it up. He wrote a letter to Secretary Vilsack signed by 180 other congressmen. It made it clear. It's supposed to affect the walking horse, the racking horse, Spotted Saddle, and one or two others. I think maybe the uh, Rocky Mountain Horse, and I don't remember the other one. But the, then that's what Secretary Vilsack hopefully will have published in the Federal Register after it goes through the Office of Management and Budget. And then it will be become a situation where the big league just simply needs to rebrand. They do not need to file a lawsuit against the government over this. What it will do, it will ruin and totally stigmatize a wonderful community of Shelbyville and Bedford County. Those people are good people. They protected us. They rose to the occasion. And they should not be put through this. And those selfish people at the celebration, it's just follow the money. That's what it's about. Follow the money. And it's not worth it. And they shouldn't take that community down or the state of Tennessee down with it over a situation where they're either personally profiting or it's ego aggrandizement or it's a control factor. All of the above. You said that you were planning to go to the Equus Film Festival in New York. What sort of uh, idea do you have in order to uh, educate the public about snoring? Coblock will be there and we will have these shoes. We will have the posters. We will have the experience from all these protests and petitions and anybody that wants to know the story, we can tell them. We produce videos from Panama City Beach. And this is the amazing thing. This has gone from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to the Blue Ridge Mountains, back down to the Mississippi Delta. Wherever they go, we're going to be there. We're going to deny them every public venue outside of the private property they own in Shelbyville. And then we're going to get them quarantined in Shelbyville, and then we're going to get this abolished. And that's precisely what our plan is. That's what we're doing. That's what's about to happen, hopefully, soon. And then they will have a decision to make whether they want to take the whole, uh, continue to stigmatize their commu the community up there, and also the state of Tennessee. This year, the governor didn't come to the celebration. Senator Alexander didn't come to the celebration. To my knowledge, no congressman came to the celebration. At the Murfreesboro hearing on August the 9th, not one city official from Shelbyville attended that. Why? Well, it's obvious why. They don't want any more part of this. They just don't know how to get out from under it. But we, the people, we speak for Shelbyville too. We're not from there, but we, they can't get us. They can't take our jobs. They can't threaten us. So we're standing up for what's right, and we'll continue to do so. We're gonna see this through. This isn't a temporary deal. There's a lot of protesters that look to you for leadership. You help get us all uh, situated. You help us get everything signed, all signs up. You provide everything for us. How do you feel about your protesters being concerned about their own safety when they are going to the shows, when they're at the shows, when they've gone inside the shows to video or take pictures, or when they're leaving the shows? How do you feel about your protesters' safety, the lack of safety, actually? That's my responsibility. You've seen me wearing an Army shirt out there with you guys. I earned a commission in the United States Army at a time when a lot of, bunch of people were not choosing to do military service. I probably wasn't the best soldier in the world, but I believe in my country, and uh, y'all are my responsibility. And I'll do everything in my power to be sure you're protected, and if anybody, does what was done last night, I will do everything also in my power to see that they're prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Well, thank you, Mr. C. Uh, I appreciate your time, and um, good luck to you. I left, I left something out. I'm just a facilitator. 
This is about the ladies. They speak, if you look at the videos from Florida, from Columbia, it's the ladies. It's always the ladies. At the end of the day, it's the ladies. So I'm glad to be along for the ride. It's been a lot of gratification for me at this point in my life to be able to have this to do. And I'm privileged to be able to work with everybody that's involved. I want to make that absolutely clear. In fact, that should have been said prefacing with the other stuff that was said. Thank you, Mr. Seed. I've, uh, I've enjoyed talking to you.